a viewer recently asked me to help to bring back the bread example in purchasing power. So I'm going to show you how inflation impacts you in the purchasing power life cycle of a fiat money. Coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver company. And you know, they keep talking about inflation. We need inflation, inflation is a good thing. Well, I'm gonna let you decide if inflation is such a good thing by looking at what happens to the purchasing power of a $1 Federal Reserve note and then a $1 gold coin. Because in the beginning of this currency's life cycle, or just before 1912, 1 20th of an ounce of gold backed a $1 bill. And you could buy 11 loaves of bread with that dollar. But then they started to transition and take value out of the money. And so by 1920, well, this was only eight loaves of bread. So there's 11 here. That means that we need to take three away. Okay, so, all right, not too bad after all. The system was flooded with money and you could still convert this into a 20th of an ounce of gold. But by 1933, well, see, it was really good for people because that 20th of an ounce of gold or of four dollars actually could buy you 14 loaves of bread. So we've got, let's see, we've got eight here. Eight, nine, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Let's put that there so it doesn't topple over. Okie dokie. Well, then the real devaluation began. So by 1971, what would have bought you 14 loaves of bread? Well, no, hun. Now that only buys you six. So we just need, well, here's six here. We'll take all the rest away. I think you're starting to get the picture of what it is that I've been talking about. Okay. One dollar, one dollar, six loaves of bread. Okay, by 2000, when there was another monetary regime shift and they went to inflation targeting, because remember, peak debt hit in 97. Oh, okay, well, let's get rid of this because a dollar only bought, okay, a little bit more than half of a loaf of bread. So let's see, we went from all of that to roughly that. By 2020, okay, a dollar only buys you, and, and I'm gonna tell you, this is the cheapest bread that I could find. Okay, a dollar only buys you that much, or maybe even a little bit less. There you go. Can you see the pattern? And you volunteered it because you don't understand inflation by design. And perception management keeps you in the system and keeps you believing that, well, this dollar can't but help to regain some of its past value, especially when it's still the dollar. So they have the digital dollar coming up. And I got to say that enables them to keep this game going because there's no limitations to the numbers that they can, can uh, go out past that 0 0.00. But a 20th of an ounce of gold as of 824, 
would buy you 28 loaves of bread. So we're gonna put this right back in. Plus, we're gonna add back all of these. And this. Oh. And these. And these. Nope, we're not done yet. Here's some more. There's some more. Here's some more. And even more. Can they see me behind all this bread? Not if you sit down. Not if I sit down, okay. Okay, there. And one more. Get the picture? This is why you need gold. So I would say that without a doubt, it is time to cover your assets. And you do that with the Wealth Shield, which is made up of physical gold and physical silver in your possession. So if you like this, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you share so people can get the picture for themselves because I need to move a loaf so I can do this. Gold over time maintains your purchasing power and that's what we really need to do. We need to hold on to what purchasing power is left. This week I had a great interview with Tanya at Incept Group Australia, and next week I'll be on with IGTV. So until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.